Ah, there you are. Don't think I've ever brought you up this part of Sherwood Forest. This is literally a mile up the road from where I live. It's been really, I mean, the market was up very fortunate that this is within easy walking distance, to be honest, if need be. But what I'm going to show you lies a little bit nearer the road. Now it's Peafield Lane, which is the road that runs out of Mansfield Woodhouse and through to Edwinstow and the world beyond Edwinstow. Yes, apparently there is one. And it's a larval feeding sign today, and one that you probably noticed and never ever thought what it could be caused by. So this is a very nice area of Sherwood Forest. It's very different to what any visitors to the Country Park area will have seen and experienced. There are a number of oaks here, especially bordering this trackway, and they're all the same age as the Napoleonic, so they're all about 200 years old, or getting up towards 200 years old, and absolutely beautiful trees. But the dominant tree here is actually sweet chestnut and because of that this is one of the most popular sites to collect and gather sweet chestnuts in the autumn parking at the roadsides can then be quite difficult but it's worth it because there are some beautiful sweet chestnuts and i do love sweet chestnuts but tucked in amongst the oaks and the sweet chestnuts You'll probably see the large leaves of sycamores. There's a lot of young sycamores growing here. But there's another tree as well. A tree that you don't see a deal of anymore in Nottinghamshire and throughout the UK, to be honest. You'll only see it in this form, usually as a very small tree or as a suckering tree. And it's elm. And that's what we're going to feature. One thing about spring so when the leaves come out those leaves are all absolutely perfect they're the brightest green that there will be for the rest of the year and they are formed to a T there's not a mark or a blemish on these leaves beautiful I do love it when leaves first come on to any tree but if you're walking along maybe a sort of mature hedgerow or the rides of woodland such as this one here near Market Warsop you may well see some leaves that are damaged and you think to yourself well how can a leaf get like that when it's only just come out well the damage may well look like that this is not the best example that I'll show you today but you can get some where the damage is so almost symmetrical and beautifully even on each side. But how can a leaf get in that state when it's only just opened up from the bud? Well, this damage was done while the leaf was still in the bud and quite marvellous really how that damage has been done because it was done by the first install larva which was probably no more than one two millimetres long at maximum how could such a tiny caterpillar eat all that well it didn't technically it ate those holes but when this leaf was still in the bud and it was all contracted up if you ate one hole out of it that punctured through the various veins which were sort of all wrapped together and overlapped and tightened within the bud so one hole would produce all them and another hole would produce all those and it was done by the caterpillar of a micro moth one of the tortoiseidae and it's Epinosia abreviana this is an easy way to map and record this species because it's the only caterpillar that would do this damage on elm it's very very distinctive as you'll see in a minute some leaves aren't always 
like this and say some are better than this you won't believe that that damage on that leaf was done by a tiny caterpillar and when the buds have opened it moves on and goes elsewhere now once these have opened the caterpillar changes its feeding habits and it constructs small tents pulling leaves together this is more characteristic feeding habits of most or many tortrix moths they will usually all do this but after eating in the bud and producing the leaf like this one in the lower left corner it then moves on to construct a tent like this and if I open this up there's a tube of silk and therein lies the larva of Epinosia abbreviana probably just one instar away from pupating and they'll feed in that tent that it's constructed until pupating and the adult moth very nicely marked it's a nice species Epinosia abbreviana not so easy to identify when it's an adult there are other species that are fairly similar but you can identify it by some holes on a leaf